Hello, and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. Now a few notes before we get going. Number one, even though this slide says statistics, the concepts in this video are also applicable to finite mathematics. So you may be watching this video in a finite math playlist or in a stats playlist, but either way, the concepts apply to both fields of study. Number two, these videos are geared towards individuals who are relatively new to stats or finite math. So I'll just be going over the basics with a lot of concrete examples. And number three, if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up or share it or add it to your playlist so others can get help as well. But also, if you think there are things I could do better, please leave a comment below. So all that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. Now in this video, we're going to continue our discussion of random variables, more specifically discrete random variables. Now in other videos, I've talked about random variables generally, and then a little bit about the difference between discrete random variables and continuous ones. So we're going to go into discrete random variables in this slideshow and start assigning probabilities to certain outcomes. So once we're done, you'll have a good grasp of how the idea of probability relates to discrete random variables. So let's start with a very simple and common example, the flip of a coin. So if I flip a coin, what are the possible outcomes? Well, I could get a heads or a tails. Those are the only two outcomes I can get. And we're going to ignore the you know, one in a trillion possibility of it landing on its edge, but only two outcomes. So what is the probability for each outcome? Well, it's commonly known as 50-50, right? So heads would be 50% chance and tails a 50% chance. So in probability terms, we say heads, a probability of 0.5 and tails, a probability of 0.5. And guess what? Congratulations. You just figured out your first discrete probability distribution. And just remember, this is a discrete probability because in discrete random variables, the outcomes are finite. So here we only have two outcomes, heads or tails. Um, it could be you know, many more finite outcomes, or it could be a infinite series of outcomes, say the number of people that place orders at Burger King in any given 15 minute period. That could be 30 people, that could be five people, but it's still going to be, you know, entire orders, entire people. There are no fractions of a person. So when we say discrete, just remember, we mean finite outcomes like heads or tails, or a infinite series of discrete outcomes. So if that confuses you, please go back and look at the previous video in this series. Okay, so what is this discrete probability distribution I was mentioning? So the probability distribution for a random variable, which is almost always sort of a capital X, describes how probabilities are assigned to each outcome for the random variable. Let me repeat a few things in that sentence. What we're doing is we're assigning a probability to each outcome of the random variable. So in this example, let's let zero equal heads and one equal tails. Now those are just arbitrary numbers. For this kind of experiment, it doesn't matter. We're basically saying heads is a category and we're going to assign it a zero. Tails is another category. We're going to assign it a one. So in this case, it doesn't really matter the zero or the one. So our discrete random variable X is described as X could be zero or one. So that's what we mean again by discrete random variable. We have two finite outcomes, zero or one, which represent heads or tails. So the probability for each outcome is described by a discrete probability function denoted as P of X. Now don't freak out about, you know, functions as we, you know, come to express them. It just means the probability 
of x, okay, of each outcome. So look at this chart. It's actually pretty simple, and it should, you know, get your feet wet to make sure you understand how we're assigning probabilities. So we have coin outcome, heads or tails. Now we assigned a 0 and a 1 for the outcomes. We're, we're basically coding them. Heads is 0, tails is 1. And then on P of X, we're assigning each one of those outcomes its probability. So of course the probability of heads is 0.5 and the probability of tails is 0.5. Now if you look at the gray uh, line at the bottom, I have sum of probabilities. And then we have the sigma sign, which means the summation or sum of P of X. So the sum of our probabilities, the sum of our P of X's, is 1. 0.5 plus 0.5 is 1. And that's an important fundamental property for all sort of probabilities like this and probabilities in general when we're talking about all the outcomes of some experiment or event. So here is a chart denoting our coin flip probabilities and it's pretty self-explanatory. So the probability of heads is 0.5, the probability of tails is also 0.5 and again if you notice 0.5 plus 0.5 equals 1. Okay, so this is just a very, very, very simple example to prepare you for more advanced ones later. Let's talk about another discrete experiment or discrete random variable. So let 1 through 6 represent the outcomes for a die roll. So our discrete random variable x is described as the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. So if we roll a die, we have 6 outcomes and only 6 outcomes. And there are no in-between outcomes. We cannot roll a 4.3. It's either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. That's what makes it discrete. Now the question is, what will our probability distri distribution look like? What will our probability function values look like? So here we're going to make a chart. and We're going to be doing several of these charts in this video and in the next video, so you'll see this pattern develop. In the first column, we have the outcomes of our random variable. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Now in the right-hand column, we have the probability associated with each outcome. Now since this is a fair die we're rolling, assuming so, the probability for each outcome will be the same. So the probability of a 1 is 1 sixth, a 2 is 1 sixth, and so on. Now if you notice, when we sum up all of our probabilities, we have 6 over 6, or 1. So our probability total there at the bottom is 1 as it should be, and in this case, the probability of each outcome is the same. So when we do our chart for our probabilities, it looks something like this. You can see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 along the bottom. Those are our outcomes, and the probability of each is the exact same. Now it rounds up to 0.17, it's actually a little bit less than that, but we're rounding up to two digits. And we call this a uniform probability distribution. And actually the coin flip is one as well, because each outcome has the exact same probability. So this is a uniform probability distribution, and it looks like this. All of them look like this. Okay, here's a third example. Now, if you're in college or have taught in college, which I've done both, um, you're probably familiar with something like this. So, let 1 through 5, the numbers 1 through 5, represent a class overall satisfaction score given by 108 students at end of semester evaluations. So, if you're a college student, I'm sure you've done these at the end of the semester. If you're an instructor like me, you've given them out at the end of the semester. Um, very similar to this. So in this case, a 1 means very dissatisfied, up through 5, which means very satisfied. So we have a random variable x, and that's going to be our score. So what are our outcomes? Well, the outcomes are 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Because when a student fills out that question, they can only mark, or they're only supposed to mark, you know, one of those answers, 
or they could leave it blank. But we're kind of dismissing students that don't answer it. We're looking at the 108 responses we had for this question. So it could be one, two, three, four, or five. You can only be one of them, and there are no in-betweens. So a student cannot bubble in 3.7. So that's what makes it discrete. Now here is our data. On the left-hand side, you can see our outcomes, x. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Then, of course, very satisfied, dissatisfied, etc., all the way up to very satisfied. In the middle, we have the number of students that made that selection. So for very dissatisfied, we had five. Um, for satisfied, which was a four, we had 44 students and so on. So we had 108 total responses. Now in the right-hand column, we had to do some simple division to figure out the probability of each outcome. So to figure out the probability, it's just the count, the number of students that answered uh, that question for whatever choice they made, divided by 108. So in the right-hand column, you can see the probabilities for each outcome. Now, of course, when we add up all those probabilities, it better equal 1, and it, of course, does. There might be a thousandth error um, rounding thing in there, but they add up to 1. So this is a new probability set. This one does not look like our coin flip or die roll. It's definitely not a uniform distribution. It's going to look a little bit different. But that's how we figure out the probabilities if all we have are the frequency or the counts of certain um, outcomes in our random variable. So here's what this chart looks like. So here is our class satisfaction probabilities in terms of like a bar chart. So we have very dissatisfied there at the bottom, and of course the probability is labeled on each bar. Now you can kind of look at this and tell that, you know, it's, it's highly skewed to the right. So we have a lot of probability on the right-hand side up on the satisfied and very satisfied end of our distribution, which if you're the instructor, that's a good thing. It either means, you know, you're doing a great job in your class, or your students just really don't care, or they don't want to hurt your feelings, so they put in four or five. Could be either, it's probably both. So this is what our distribution looks like. Now if you notice, we've sort of done some of these examples and introduced certain conditions for these probabilities without actually formally talking about them or defining them. So what are some conditions for discrete probabilities? Well, we know that the probability for our outcome has to be between 0 and 1. Of course, it, it can include 0 or 1. And that should kind of make sense. And that's sort of a fundamental rule for you know, all probabilities in events like this. So you really can't have a probability below 0, because it either happens or it doesn't. Or and you can't really have a probability above 1, because it either happens or it doesn't. So you can have 0 or 1 or anything in between. And that's kind of common sense, but it's written in a formal way here. So the probability of each outcome, which is the P of X, has to be between 0 and 1. Now this is also a condition we've been discussing, and that is the sum of all of our probabilities of our outcomes has to equal 1. So if you remember, when we added up all of our P of X's, the probability of our outcomes in the right-hand column, they would always add up to 1. So in plain English, the sum of all of our random variable probabilities must equal 1. Now I went ahead and coded things in the color there so you can see how the definition relates to the equation. So the sum is just the sigma there, the capital uppercase sigma, um, in the orange. And then the probabilities are there sort of in the lighter orange color. So in a lot of my videos, I try to show you how the English, how it's kind of said, relates to the equation. But these are two fundamental conditions for our discrete probabilities, and in many cases, probabilities in general. What about compound probabilities? What does that mean? So what is the probability of rolling a 2 or a 5 during a die roll? So a 2 or a 5. So our outcomes are 2 or 5. So here is our chart from before. I've went ahead and highlighted the 2 and the 5 in the yellow color. 
So what is the probability of 2 or 5? Well, the probability of 2 is 1 sixth. The probability of 5 is 1 sixth. So we add those together, and the probability of rolling a 2 or a 5 is 2 sixth or 1 third. Okay, and that should kind of make sense. It's 2 out of the 6 outcomes. So the probability of rolling either one of those is 2 out of 6 or 1 third. Now I could ask you, what is the probability of rolling a 4 or less? Well, that would be a 4, 3, 2, or 1. So that would be 1 6 plus 1 6 plus 1 6 plus 1 6. That would be 4 6 or 2 thirds. So oftentimes you come across, across questions like that where they ask you a range um, of probabilities or kind of like they chop the end off the probabilities and ask you what that might be or it's complement on the other end. So just because you have a chart of probabilities and they're going to ask you just one, they might ask you something, you know, where you have to combine them or add and subtract. But this is just a case of how we do that. Another case, what's the probability of a student being satisfied or very satisfied with the course we examined earlier? So remember, those two were coded as four and five. So satisfied was four, very satisfied was five. So here is our chart. I went ahead and highlighted those two in yellow. So the probability of being satisfied was 0 0.407, very satisfied was 0 0.351. So we just add those together, and the probability of being satisfied or very satisfied is 0.758 which is 75.8%. So that's pretty good. But then again, we could ask you, you know, different parts of these probabilities in the middle, or we could say, you know, what's the probability that a student is uh, dissatisfied or very dissatisfied? Then of course we would add together the one and the two. All right, that's a quick review and we are done. So just remember, all this is, this is not overly complicated. It's actually something you probably do without thinking about it in your life all the time. So what is a probability a distribution? And basically all it is is that each random variable has certain outcomes. And then we assign probabilities to those outcomes. So our coin flip, the probabilities were 50-50 or 0.5 and 0.5. For the die roll, they were 1 sixth because it was a fair die, so each one was equally likely. Now the probability function p of x just denotes the associated probability for each outcome of the random variable. And that's what I just said. So in our p of x column for the die roll would be 0.5 and 0.5. And of course for our class evaluations it was a lot different. It just depended on how many students answered what in their survey. Now we had two conditions, just remember. The probability for each outcome has to be between 0 and 1 and it can be 0 or 1, so it is inclusive. And the sum of our probabilities for our outcomes must equal 1. So in the die example, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is 1. In the die throw example, uh, 1 sixth and 1 sixth, 1 sixth, 1 sixth, 1 sixth, 1 sixth is 6 over 6, and that's also 1. So you just need to keep those two fundamental rules in mind as you branch out into more complex questions. All right, and that is it for this video. Again, we just covered the basic concepts of discrete random variable probabilities. Now, in the future videos, we'll do more uh, involved examples, more complex examples, but this really gives you the fundamental idea of how the tables are constructed, how the graphs are constructed, and you can really learn a lot just from those things. So again, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it, give it a like, or whatever else, add it to your own playlist, I'd appreciate it. Or if there are things I can do better, please let me know constructively in the comments below. That wraps up this video. Again, thank you very much for watching, and look forward to seeing you next time.